is good. Amen. All right, let's embark on the word of God today. Is that okay? Okay, let's um, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. We'll start in Romans 5. Today we're going to talk about grace and mercy. We're going to start a teaching today on grace and mercy. So this will be a series. Uh, we're going to start on it today and begin to unpack it. And uh, we'll go from there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. Lord, we ask that you open our minds today. Open our hearts today that we would hear you, that we would see you that we would know what you're describing for us in your word, that the revelation and knowledge and truth would change our lives. We thank you for transforming of our minds today, that we're being renewed in the spirit of God and the spirit of our minds, that we will bring forth fruit worthy of your glory today. Lord, we give you honor and praise that we are not just hearers of the word, but we're also doers in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement said amen, amen, amen again. Romans chapter 5, I want to read all of chapter 5 just for context for us to get a foundation and a laying okay and it'll be on the screen if you don't have your Bibles if you don't have a Bible I encourage you to get a physical Bible I know we're in the day and age of technology and I appreciate the technology but I encourage you to get a physical Bible if you can okay one you can write in your own study time or whatever it is because they'll speak back to you at a later time okay all right Romans chapter 5 we're going to read verse 1 through verse 21 ready Read. All right, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, hmm. because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, for if when we were enemies, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. That is important, the atonement. Verse 12, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Do you see that? Death to all men and all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense one man, one, one many be dead, through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is to of is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men into the condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, come on church, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as this sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign 
through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank God for the reading of his word. Again, we're entering into a discussion on grace and mercy. Um, I, I believe this is so pivotal for the body of Christ right now. Um, uh, the Lord was just giving me a backdrop of Hebrews 5 and Hebrews 6. Um, and I'm not turning there today, but in your own time, read Hebrews 5 and Hebrews 6, where the Lord was saying to me, um, where he has many things to say to us in 5. He says, but we're not ready to receive them yet. Okay, and then he went on to say, he said, the time where we should be, we should be teaching and, and encouraging and building up and edifying and exhorting other people, we have need that one teach us again, which be the first oracles of the principles of God. All right, he says that, and he goes on to say, hey, we should be discerning of both good and evil. It says that we should now, what, have our senses exercised in five. And then in chapter six of Hebrews, he goes on to say, we should be able to move on. We should be growing up. We were not meant as the body of Christ to stay stagnant, to stay in a place to where we're pulling on God even in the same way over a period of time. So the Lord was showing to me uh, that, that we need a better understanding, uh, an appropriate application of grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't want to attack anyone or any doctrine or any church or any of that. I just want to go through the word. I want to share the revelation with us. We're going to walk through this. We're going to unpack this. I actually want to even be mindful of time today. Amen? So I'm going to ask for about 45 minutes. Hopefully, I can stay within that time frame, and we're going to shut it down. Y'all laughing? No, that's the goal because we're going to unpack it, and I want you to get it, and I don't want to come on. You, 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 get, you get overfilled, and then you, you, then you go to sleep. You check out. I don't want you to check out. So I asked for about 45 minutes. You're on the tablet for 45 minutes. You watched the Titanic, that was three hours. I'm pleading with you for 45. Amen. All right, let's, let's, let's dive into this. So I, I don't want to talk today too much about what grace and mercy is. I don't want to go so much into the Hebrew and Greek. The Lord was quickening me to now show us where grace and mercy is. Where, where the positioning, the proper protocol, where mercy is and where grace is so we know how to apply them in their proper context and how they flow. Because if, if, if you, uh, where are my bakers? No bakers? Dang. Lord, have mercy. You have to preheat the oven, right? All right, you got to preheat. It's got to get to the temperature before you put the ingredients in and put it together. You got to preheat it, right? You have to also put the ingredients in certain order. Sometimes you have to fold in certain parts before you mix certain parts. And certain things have to be together before you get to other stages in the cooking process, right? It's the same with grace and mercy. So I want to uh, just dive into this today. We started in Romans 5, and I want to go back here. Go to verse... Go to verse 1. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with our God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Know this now. There's a grace that we enter into. So, so here, here's, the, here's the, the preface today. When we understand what mercy is and where mercy goes, and we understand where grace is and where grace goes, we will be able to walk in them in an understanding and revelation and power, which would mature us. So we wrestle, and a lot of times in the church, we call mercy grace. And you can't walk in a truth that you're, 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 you're ignorant of or that you're not, in, you're not in lockstep and sync with. We need to know what that is. So, so I want to give you a couple of scriptures just to reference here. Um, let's see. Let's do this. 85, Psalm 85 and 10. We're going to come back to Romans for a reference here, but I want Psalm 85 and 10. It says, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy and truth, mercy and truth. You see that. So you're going to see these throughout the Bible. In your own study time, look up mercy and look up truth. Look up grace and look up truth when you do your studies. Look at Psalm 89 and 14. I'm making a case now. It says, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. 
So mercy and truth. Here's, here's, the, here's the proper protocol. Until there's a divider between grace and truth. I'm sorry, a divider between grace and mercy. And it's called truth. And his name is Jesus. All right, let's go back to Romans, Romans 5. Now, I want to show you this. Verse 12 and 5. He says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. So is anyone without sin? All were born into sin by the, by the work of Adam. For until, watch this, verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world. Now, notice now, Moses didn't create sin. You got to put this in context. So, so in your own time, read Romans 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Romans 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Read them in context now about grace. So we're going to reenter that. But, but I want to give this to you. It says, until the law, sin was in the world. So it was already present. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. I need you to get this. So Adam's sin but Moses brought the law. Why? Because God would have been an unjust God to judge us without it being written. Okay. Okay, okay. How many of you are employed? You have an employer? All right. You, you, they, they make you sign a policies and procedure when you got hired, right? In the HR, in the training, you signed it. They're holding you accountable to what is written. When you violate, they're going to they're gonna point to your signature on those policies and procedures to say, here's where you erred, so our hands are clean in how we deal with you. When we write you up, when we fire you, it's justified because of the agreement that we have in writing. Watch now. You already had your skills before. That's why they hired you, because you had your skills. So the writing didn't give you your skills. Just as the law did not bring sin, it defined sin. Why is this important? Adam sinned. Moses wrote the law. So now God said, look, let's look at the scripture. He says it was already in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. So God could not impute sin to us. In Romans chapter 4, the scripture says that, that Abraham, it was accounted unto him for righteousness because he believed God. It says the man is blessed where sin is not imputed. So where sin has not been removed, you are blessed. But we all were born into sin. So how can sin just be imputed? Watch verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigns. So sin, we know sin brings death, right? Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. So there were people who had not sinned, who were in sin because they were brought into sin. This deals with our self-righteousness. Because we say, well, I didn't murder anybody, and I didn't steal, and I don't curse, and I don't drink. And I, we all were brought in through the blood of Adam. We were born and birthed into sin despite your verse, your sin nature. We're all in it. Amen? Now, now, let's go further. He says, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of the Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. But, as the offense, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. There we are. For if the offense, for if through the offense one may, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man. Oh, hold on. Watch verse 16. And now it's not by one that sins, so is the free gift. For the judgment was of, unto one unto condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses to justification. So get this now. Because of sin, God now brought the law through Moses that he could now judge sin. Oh, this is so good. He brought judgment unto condemnation so that there will be a difference between mercy and grace. We call grace mercy. 
give him more grace. Just give him more grace. No, 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 no. Let let me just, just just for a reference point, I'll say this for a reference point. We'll get into later the Greek and the Hebrew and all that. We'll break that down. So mercy is for your miss. Mercy is for your mess. Mercy is for missing the mark. When we sin, that's what sin means, to miss the mark. Mercy is where God did not give you what you earned. Come on now. It's the withholding of payment that's due you. That's mercy. Are you with me? Grace, we've probably heard, what you heard, how the definition you heard of grace say it's undeserved favor. I, I don't align with that. I don't align, I don't believe the scriptures align with that. Because we when we get into deserving, you're getting into a worth conversation. See, deserving is dealing with your worth and worthiness. And, and, and how do we rank or merit or measure each other's worthiness? We can't. But the creator can. So God made us in his image so he can say what we're deserving of. So I believe that the, the grace is God's unearned access. We just read that here in the scripture. In verse what? That was verse 2. He says, by whom we have access into, by faith into this grace by which we stand. So, so f- grace is going to be God giving you what you could not obtain or earn. Mercy is blocking, not giving, because we've we got to change our reference points. Reference point. Say reference point. Refer- you take a note, write down reference point. Reference point is going to be everything because reference point gives you perspective. And if you're in a place you, see, you tend to see from a place, and you begin to project your perspective onto others from where you are. But we have to come from the scriptures, people. We have to come from the spirit of God and what he is saying. And I want you to understand that if you don't understand mercy and grace, they are divided by judgment. And we're in a society, in a culture, that says what? Don't judge me. Don't judge. I want to go to a church where they don't judge. I want to, I want to hear preaching that doesn't judge me. I, if, if, oh, Lord. Okay. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Settle me. Isaiah 45, 21. It's going to scream. Isaiah 45, 21 through 23. Watch this. It says, tell ye and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together whom have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord, and there is no God beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn, oh Lord, by myself. At this point here I want you to get. God says, I have sworn, because, you know, we put it on mama. We put it on grandmama. Come on, you know, if I put that on my dad, uncle, and all this kind of stuff. You know, kid, we used to be swearing on all kind of stuff. No, God said, I swore by me. I swore by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. What, what is God saying? Verse, verse 22, go back. Verse 21, he says there, he is a just God and a Savior. This is so important that we understand that God is just. The epistles say that he is a righteous judge. When we understand this, oh, Lord, help me. God's judgment is always just. Hello? It says before the worlds were framed by the foundation, we understand by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God, right? So God set everything in order. We have to stop referencing ourselves for what we call good or bad. See, we got our own little morale rankings based on how we grew up and what caused us pain and what caused us shame and what we were afraid of and what we like and what we think is popular. And we start ranking what is good and what is bad. But the Bible says there is none good but God. That's what it's referring. We can't make ourselves good or bad. It is through God. There is not one good outside of God. 
that's why, that's why now, when we, when we approach grace and mercy, we can't do it from ourselves. We have to have, as he said, Moses brought the law, so God had a reference point to judge. Now, once he judges, he gets to now decide what the sentence is. This is where we as people miss it because we don't like the past sentence. And it's not our place because we're not the righteous judge. However, but and. I'm going to give you an example. So, 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 God has put me in spot as the chief servant here. So if things get out of order, you're going to be looking at me. You ain't going to do nothing. Pastor, just going to let that go on? You ain't waiting on God to judge you. You ain't looking at God. You're looking at me. The little kids out of order? No control? You ain't looking at God. He's the judge. Wait, 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 wait. He's the judge. You're looking at the parents. See, God gives authority. He gave us dominion here. He gave us authority here. So things under our jurisdiction, we have to. That's why your identity got to be intact. You have to judge them. What am I saying? I'm saying if you don't judge it, you can't forgive it. Okay. If you don't judge it, you can't show it mercy. It has to be judged first. God brought the law through Moses so he could now bring a just and his hands are clean. When he went to judge, notice he told Adam, Adam, in the garden, in the garden, watch, watch, watch. He told him, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Did Adam eat? Did he eat? Did Eve eat? Yes, they ate. Watch, watch the scripture. God showed them mercy after he judged them. He had to judge them because he gave his word that if they did this, then this would happen. If God did not judge them, then he was not to be trusted because his word would be void and it will go out and it would mean nothing. This is why you have to be mindful of your idle words and just saying things and just being willy-nilly with your feelings and just opening your mouth. You got to God because we are speaking spirits. We're in the image of God. And when we speak a thing, that thing is supposed to come to pass. And when you say this is the last time, it's supposed to be the last time. When you say this better not never happen again, it's supposed to not never happen again. And if it does, you, the one in authority, you better come judge it. And not see, just, uh, see, see, we don't judge because we don't understand stewardship. And, and we're now in this day and age, we have the, we have the body, because this is being preached from pulpits, this greasy grace, where, where, oh, no, I'm not, I'm going to give you a Bible, because I know where you're at. I'm going to give you a Bible right here in five. Romans five. <laughs> Go down to verse 19. It says, for, as one man, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so that by the obedience of one, many should be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Watch. Common preaching today makes grace the replacement for sin. That's not what that scripture is saying. So we just take away sin and put in grace. How we get there? John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh. The what? The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the, only, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of 
full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is the, of the one of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Hold on. Jesus is now just being brought in, but John's saying he was already here before me. He just had manifest in this form, putting on flesh, but he was already here. And his fullness, all have we received and grace for grace. Verse 17, for the law was given by who? There it is again. That's important. No, don't, don't miss the lining up of what the scripture said. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Why is this so important and relevant? So because the law revealed what we could not do. Jesus now came. See, grace is God's empowerment and his enablement and his encouragement to accomplish what his will says. Jesus is full of grace and truth. So, so grace is not for sin. We'll catch up. Grace is not for you to continue in sin. Grace is not the replacement for sin. Grace is the empowerment to fulfill God's will. Grace is God's strength in your body. Grace is God's strength in your mind. God's, God's strength, God now enables you what you could not do because sin and death ruled and reigned. There came one who put on flesh. What did he do? Hold on. Don't miss it. Don't just get into grace. He had to be judged. God had to judge Jesus for us to enter into grace. So he is the one middle mediator way to the Father. Judgment. So without judgment, we don't even enter into grace. We got to change your mind. If it came by Jesus, how you get it and don't got Jesus? If grace came by Jesus, how do people have grace and don't have Jesus? Uh, we're going to break this thing down. We're going to walk this thing right on through. We're going to be clear and crystal. If the, if, so we, we can't bestow grace upon people who don't have Jesus. I'm going to give you more Bible. Give me, give, me, uh, give me Titus. Give me Titus. Give me Titus. I'm going to give you scripture. I got a lot of scripture because I'm going to back up what I'm saying. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So God wished that none should perish. Don't hear what I'm not saying. He gave the grace through Jesus that we might be saved. But until you get Jesus, the grace is not released. For you to now do God's will. That's mercy. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I got you. I got you. Lamentations. 3 and 19. 19 through 23. Lamentations. It says, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them in remembrance and is humbled in me. Don't miss that. He said, I go, back to, go back to verse 19. He says, my, my, remembering my affliction and my misery and the wormwood and the gall. I'm remembering that. My mind is on it. Go to verse 20. My soul, because what's in my mind, my soul has them in remembrance and it humbles me. This I recall to my mind, therefore. I have hope. He, watch this. I got stuff that I'm thinking about, my own affliction, my own gall, my own misery, but I have hope. How do I have hope? It is the, verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. <laughs> because of his compassions, they fail not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What am I doing? I want you to have proper application of mercy, which comes after judgment, 
which is which is relegated in truth. Okay, all right, I got you right here. I'm going to use myself as an example. Uh, growing up, uh, I mentioned to you, many of you, my mother, who's dead now, she was a drug addict. She was a crack addict, uh, functioning addict. She worked, went to work, school, work every day, that kind of thing. And I remember taking on the emotions of wanting to have my mother delivered. I remember me personally taking her as a child. I'm like, okay, because I'm seeing this. I'm not blind. And, and until I was able to judge her actions were right or wrong, not according to me, but according to God, I had to judge it. I had to say that's right or that's wrong. And once I judged it, my peace returned to me that her choices were not mine. I'm going somewhere with this. So now I can actually love her properly because I've judged her works, whether they are good or bad. I actually can forgive her properly now because I've judged the works, not by me, not by, ah, oh, who are you to judge? That's your mom. You didn't judge. Ah, 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 ah. We miss it. We miss it. The Bible says we're going to judge the angels. Read all the way to Scripture. It says, don't judge unless you be judged. With what measure you judge, you shall be judged. So the same measure you meet shall be returned unto you. We can't even release mercy and forgiveness until we call a thing a thing. This is going to help you with your marriage. This is going to help you with your parenting. This is going to help you with your leadership. You got to be able to judge and call it what it is. And because we don't like to pass sentence as judge, we refrain from calling the thing what it is. And we go into this self-deception trying to keep friends and to be liked and not to be the bad guy. But until you call that thing what it is, you can't even show your spouse mercy until you say this is what you're doing. The love you have for your child is warped because you won't deal with them in truth. Watch. Doesn't mean mercy can't be in your sentencing. But the judgment is, this is what it is. Pastor Rachel, remember we were driving, uh, just come from Jacksonville in the Maxima? What's up, which time? Well, when the police stopped us, I was doing about 100. I was standing up on that thing. We had somewhere to be. Cops said, man, I had to send an officer up two exits to cut you off because I couldn't get behind you and catch you. My sons were young. He looked in the back. He said, you were doing 100 or whatever in a 70. He said, anything over 25, I could take you to jail. He said, if your sons weren't in here, I would take you to jail. Watch. I was dirty. I was wrong. According to the law written, oh, come on, come on. I was in lasciviousness by what my dashboard said. See, we reference our dashboard for how we're going to live life. And just because it's on my dash doesn't mean it's legal to do. Uh, that, that's where you're at. I can do God things. God. No, 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 no. No, there's, there's order. There's structure. And just because it's on the dash don't mean I should do it. He said, I ought to take you to jail. What did it do? My mind was on my affliction. I was being judged. Righteously. I was in error. He was judging me. See, if you don't judge, there can't be repentance. This is relative. See, this is why we don't walk into the newness and the power of God, because we don't deal with the basic stuff. He says the laying on of hands, repenting from dead works. Why are you still? Because we vacillating, because we don't want to be judged. We're supposed to judge ourselves. We're supposed to take the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, and put that thing on our belly and let that thing separate and say, that was my soul. That was my flesh. That was my ambition. That was me. I'm sorry for manipulating you, spouse. 
I'm sorry for using you children for my own glorification. It's going to help you be a better uh, uh, adult child to your parents. See, if you don't, Joel, I just told you about mine. You won't look at your parents' work and say that's wrong. I didn't say you didn't love your parent. The Bible says we're supposed to love even our enemies. Don't hear what I'm not saying. You're supposed to judge righteously by God's standard on whether it's good or not good, whether it's acceptable or not acceptable. That's why the word of God cuts like a two-edged sword, goes down to the root of that thing. It's separated say, come out of your soul. This is what the Spirit is saying. Come out of your flesh. This is what the Spirit is ordained for that. Come out of your feelings. This is what the Spirit is saying. Doing. You're not giving them money. Because you've judged that if they fail, it's a representation of you. So you give them money and feed their habits and enable them. So when the officer stopped, he wrote me a ticket. Watch. Mercy. He could have took me to jail and been just, but he showed me mercy. See, when you judge righteously, now the sentence can contain mercy if that's what the Lord is ordering. God went in the, went in the garden, said, okay, Satan, this is what you're going to get. Eve, this is what you, he's judging them. And your childbearing, blah, blah, blah. Adam, thorns and thistles, sweat of your brow. He judged them. Watch this. And covered them in coats of skin. Look at mercy. See, we, we make all judgment bad. God's judgment is just. He's full of. Uh, watch this. Here, here we go right here. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. 18. He says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. This is Moses talking to God now. And he said, I will make all thy good, my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. <laughs> go back, go back to 19. God said, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. God said, I will be merciful to I will show mercy. Verse 20. And he said, you can't see my face, Moses, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and I shall stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will, oh, Lord, this is so good. I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Don't miss the correlation here. And it came, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt be able to see my back parts, but my face you shall not see. This is so good. This is so good. So, so, so connotation. Remember, Jesus is the rock. So in Christ, he will put us in. He told Moses, I'm going, you want to see my face, but if you see my face, you're going to die, meaning I have to judge you. God's face means judgment. But the Bible says that Moses and God talk what? Mouth to mouth. So this, you got to get that kind of take. He said, but if you see my face, I have to judge you. And you can't live with me judging you. But there's a place that I can put you, that you can see me. Philip said, show us, show us, show us the Father, show us the Father. Jesus said, all this time I've been with you and you time I show you the Father? When you see me, you've seen the Father. He is the, he is the image of the invisible God. He said, Moses, I'm going to put you in the cleft in a safe space in the rock. I don't know what rock has a safe space in it, but he says that I'm going to put my hand. I'm going to put my hand over the rock. I'm going to judge the rock. And after I put my hand on the rock and pass by, you will then see my back parts. I'm going to judge. I'm going to put you in the rock, but I'm going to judge the rock. 
so I don't kill you. And I'm going to pass by where I judged it. And then you will see a part of me that you can handle. I'm going to show you mercy by not giving you. You're going to be right there. I almost hit you, but you're in the rock. So I just hit the rock. But if you come out of the rock, but if you're in the rock, and my hand get on the rock, and I pass by saying, I'm done with that moment. I'm not going to, I'm not condemning you, although you're in error, but I know you want to see me, so I'm going to go by. So you now can see the part, my grace. When I pass over, that's what the death angel was. It was the blood of the innocent speaking. Don't kill over here. It's now, just so you don't think this Old Testament, Romans 9 and 15 says the same thing. This is New Testament. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And on I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Here, get this. Mercy is not yours. It's not ours to demand. We can't go to God and demand mercy. See, God is so just. When he put his principles in place, he said everything will produce after the seed, after its own kind. That means the law was working. Hold on. Before Moses wrote the law, there was already laws in the land. That's why you got to understand the Bible. Don't get, law, don't get hung up on the law because the scripture says also, I think in Romans 6, says that the law was holy. So what am I saying? See, man's mercy is messy. The mercy of man is messy. How do I know? Because the mercy of man does not involve judgment. And judgment must be based in truth. So we lie to ourselves to prevent from judging a thing because we don't want it to feel bad and them to feel bad and us to feel bad. So we're now walking in. That's why Romans chapter 8 says what? There is therefore now what? No condemnation to who? Them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after their feelings, their desires, their cravings being liked. We're in Christ, but we can, come out of, we can come out of the rock to walk in our flesh to make sure something stay good on a carnal level. But when I judge it, that's why you got to judge yourself. That's why we got to, we can't let this little rejected generation teach us through their phones and their tablets and TikTok. We can't let this, oh Lord. Okay, all right, I got it. So we come out of a former generation where uh, there were areas where love was not expressed, especially in the church. Who, 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 got, who got beat with an extension cord? Look at the hands. Look around the room. All right? Now, the, the intention was probably good. You, did you do something? Like, okay, the same hands. Did you do something worthy of being spanked? Yes. The extension cord was a bit much. That had already had a purpose. <laughs> Let electricity pass through the extension cord. That was not made for man. Come on now, older generation. But with good intention, there came error. So now, to prevent from looking like anything, of the former, we don't spank at all. I'm not promoting spanking or what not. I, you, you, the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. The Bible says, if you don't correct your son, you don't love him. He didn't say give him time out. Time out ain't working. And I'm telling you it works because I do this to strangers in the store. I like order. I want all my shopping to be a pleasure. All I need is eye contact. I'll be walking the aisle at them. When they lock eyes with me, cut it out. Cut it out. Stop. I do it all the time. Stop it. 
Mama don't know why they acting right now. They ran into authority, not on my watch. You ain't got to be my child. What happened to old school where, man, I had people used to spank me and tell my mama they spanked me. And get another one when you get home. But can't nobody tell yours nothing. We, we raised a rejected generation. And now all they say is don't judge me. Anything I want to do is right. Anything I feel is right because I feel it. But the Bible says that God is a just judge. And we have to now come to the thing what? Jesus came full of what? Grace and truth. So until I judge it, I can't put mercy on it. Therefore, I cannot by that same truth enter into grace. So the officer didn't tell me when he gave me the ticket. Now you go on and you see about the next five exits and after you get out of us, you go and see that thing really do. You can see if you can get 125. He didn't enable me. I said that for a reason. Because we say where sin did abound, grace does much more abound. And we take grace as an enablement to continue to go sin. He didn't tell me to go see whatever if I can do more. He says, don't do this anymore. Jesus told the woman who was caught in the act, go sin no more. He was grace. Don't go do this. I don't care how you feel. See how warped the doctrine has got? See how warped and off that is? That we think now because sin, so it means where sin ruled and reigned, where you could not get out of sin, Without a way maker, it means the same way through the same way maker, grace is now abounding and grace overrules, over reigns, dominates over sin. Where sin had you under control, grace has you now empowered. Where you could not live right because of your sin nature, grace, the goodness of God in you, enables you, empowers you, enacts you to now do, embark on what God wants your will to be done for him. Are you hearing me? But it only comes through just judgment. Just judgment. I said just judgment. You go get the x-ray, judge it. You look at the bank account, judge it. You look at the children's behavior, <laughs> judge it. It is love. It's unloving for you not to judge it. It's unloving for you to allow your spouse who's walking off a cliff. <laughs> oh, They're going to be mad at me. Oh, but the cliff is so close. But, and, and they're just walking blind. But you want to be liked. You say, I'm just showing more grace, more mercy. Does this look like grace and mercy? Does this look like grace and mercy? Does this look like grace and mercy? Y'all don't let me fall. Does this look like grace and mercy? Huh? Huh? Y'all don't love me? Why are you judging me? When you going to start doing that so they can really know the love of God and they can really know love and grace and mercy? Give me 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7. It says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Say humility. For God resisteth the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Go back to verse 5. He says, wait, be subject one to another. What does that mean? It didn't say just your pastor. We have to just, that, that skirt too short. That top too low. Men, those pants too tight. 
We didn't have that in my day growing up. This new school, hey, hey, bro. If you don't judge it, there's no repentance. There's no apology. There's no correction. You have to judge it. And now, in your sentencing, you show mercy. Look at the life of David. I'm, I'm going to land here in a minute. Look, look at the life of David. David, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. David with his son Amnon, who raped his daughter, his sister, the guy's sister. Watch. David did not judge him. But in David's mind, David was showing him mercy. But Absalom's watching who him and the sister have the same mama. Not, not King David. Not cut Goliath off, head off King David. You ain't going to do nothing? Absalom was waiting for his father to judge the brother. You got to be careful what you're teaching people by not judging. You make your mercy, uh, the mercy of man is messy, and it has no law in it. It has no justice in it. It has no love in it because it's self-preservation. I want them to be cool with me, and I want them to be like and, and absorbed in all this. But Absalom's watching. Oh, we're in year two? You ain't, you ain't said nothing? You pulled him close. He violated your daughter, and you pulled him close? Why did David not judge him? Because David did the same thing to Bathsheba. So when David was looking at Amnon, David was seeing himself. And that's why you got to how I apply the judgment to yourself first. You got to put the word to yourself first. So when God brings something to you and before you, you can see that thing and not be counseling you through them. You cannot. David in his soul could not judge Amnon because he was Amnon. Let me just pull him close. You want somebody to love you like you want to love them? No, you judge it. So we can now get real mercy. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. How does love cover it? Love has to touch it. Love is not this mystical little, little dew up in the air. No, no, no. Love's going to cover it by touching it. And now, once God has judged it, he can now choose to show mercy. When David counted the people, he erred. Hold on. God is just. So everything God does is good. You don't get to judge God. God is the judge. See, our reference point is not righteous, so therefore we can't judge righteous. That's why we have to stay in the spirit and know what the spirit is saying for us to do. So it might be time for you to fire somebody. It might be time for you to do something different, but you do it by the spirit. That's why you can't get into vengeance. That's why your soul has to be settled. So when you judge, you judge righteous. You're not trying to get back. Get back. See, what Absalom did, Absalom turned into vengeance because David didn't judge. The Bible says fathers don't provoke your children to anger. That's what David did to, to Absalom. When David counted the people, 70,000 died. Hold on. And God was still just. David, ha, huh, began to cry, began to plead to the Lord. Wait. And God showed him mercy. But God was still just. Just because consequences come don't mean God is not just. God already put the consequences in the principle. See, that's where we miss it. We think God is around to judge in every situation. No, God put us here to judge it. And he put laws in the earth. That's why when Cain killed his brother Abel and his blood began to speak, the Bible says what? The earth will not produce her fruit, her strength unto you. Why? Because you violated a law. A principle was broken. That's why we have to understand any jurisdiction that God has given us, we cannot be afraid to judge. I'm not unloving because I judge it. I judge it because I love. Now, the scripture we just went into to Peter. Oh, this is good. Watch. We're going to close with this. <laughs> he says, be ye subject one to another. Be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Watch. So, when you're in pride, you won't humble yourself. See, when my mind is on my affliction, what was the scripture we got? 
Was that Isaiah? Isaiah 45? When my mind is on the misery, when I understand that God was merciful to me, it's supposed to humble you. When you know you missed it and you weren't consumed, When I was on the phone with that lady from the IRS and I owed it, oh, my knuckles was on the floor. I was so humble. I, whatever you say, lady, whatever. Whatever you, what, whatever you say, whatever you say. And because I went low, I wasn't going to, I owe you now. What you talking about? I had no attitude. Uh uh. Grace, because I acknowledged the judgment that it was right. Now, God showed me mercy. And released grace to me. He set me back up to win. That's Rachel. Remember when you lost your job? You had to go stay with somebody in their loft, not in their room, in the loft. And went and apply for a job. And watch this the lease she had just broke showed up on her credit. Lady said, All right, we ain't gonna look at that. She saw it. She if she judged it, and then she showed her mercy, crumbled it up. If you would judge righteously and get out of your own feelings and call a thing a thing and deal with it in truth, because Jesus came full of grace and truth, there will be a grace release through your humility. That's why people can't even get saved until they acknowledge, I'm a sinner. What are they doing? I'm coming out of my own goodness and my own self to say, God, I need you. God, I don't know what to do. I don't have this figured out. And he says, when you acknowledge me in that way, grace is released unto your life that you are now empowered to live holy. You are now empowered to think in your right mind. You are now empowered to prosper without pain, without fine print, without toil without frustration. I bring you to a place of peace. But we have to judge righteously. We have to understand that grace is God's enablement to go and do his will. And that mercy is where you missed it. And mercy is where you messed up. And mercy is where you made mistakes. And mercy is where you made it. It's all just jacked up and it stinks. And nobody wants to see it and you're not proud of it. But there is a God. There is a God who is grace and who is mercy. And he releases it under his own will. Under his own jurisdiction. He's so searching for humility. He's searching for somebody to say, it's me, oh God, in the need of prayer. It's me. I'm the one. Look, behold, I'm the one, a sinner. I dropped the ball. I messed it up. Stop puffing yourself up in your own vanity. That's why grace is not released to you. That's why you can't do the will of God, because you're in the will of you, and you're puffed up in pride. God says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He says, I resist you. He said, I can't even release what I want to release to you, because you're in pride, because you're resisting me, and I have to resist you. You. God, he said, I will not be mocked. He said, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I cannot release my resources to you. I cannot release my wife to you. I cannot release that husband to you. I cannot release wealth to you. Why? Because you're resisting me with your pride. And to not judge is pride. And to not call it what it is is pride. And for you to not get all your affairs in order is pride. And the power of God cannot be released in that area. Call it what it is. Stop petting it. Stop petting it. Stop stroking it. God wants to release grace to it. You need grace. The Bible says that Jesus grew in grace. We need to grow in grace. If Jesus grew in grace, we need to grow in grace. But God cannot release it where he is resisting, where pride is present. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. You should see your sins and you should see your mistakes and not go into a place of vanity, not go into a place of shame. It should bring you to a place and say, God, I need you. And now he releases because you're humble. He releases because you don't have it all together. He releases it. He gives it. You don't have to be so smart. Just be humble. Just be submitted. Just be open. And God will grant the grace. And God will release the grace. You don't have to know how to do it. He will send somebody to you if you humble yourself and say, I don't know how. I need help. He will show you. But there is a divider between grace and mercy. And it is just truth 
and judgment. So you can define what is mercy and you can define what is grace because you've dealt with that thing in righteousness, not covering it up, but saying this is right or wrong according to God's standards. This is right or wrong according to God's word. This person is out of order or in error according to what God said. Not about me liking them or not liking them. And God will give you, God will show you when to show mercy and how to show mercy so it's not messy. Because when it's messy, people are watching you violate principle. And that makes you not trustworthy because they see your mind is not sound and you're not consistent in the way you give it out. Humble yourself. I said, humble yourself. There's a grace that God wants to give to every single individual in this room, but it requires us to, hey, judge our own lives, judge your own words, judge your own habits, judge your own mindset, judge your own inconsistency, judge your own faithfulness, judge your own stewardship, judge it, judge it. And when you judge it, and God said, you see what I see? That's why he asked Adam, where are you? He wanted him to judge where you are. Where are you? I know where you are. He's merciful even talking to you. He's being merciful. Even delaying your judgment, he's being merciful. That you didn't fall dead in that bed. He was merciful. And that situation didn't kill you. You are merciful. He was merciful to you. And when you acknowledge that, it should bring you to humility. And now grace is waiting to flood you. Now grace is waiting to overwhelm you. Now grace it's present, hey, for the right mindset for you to go forward in God. For you to go forward in God. That's why, that's why, that's why you need to understand that condemnation is not a part of you now. Because you've been by grace, you are saved. I sense repentance. If you need to repent, just come to the altar. Just repent. If God to reveal something, just come to the altar. Don't try to figure it out and all that. Just come to the altar. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. God is loving. God is loving. He is lo love judges you. Hey, but he doesn't condemn us. He doesn't sentence us to death. He sent his son whom he sentenced. He sent his son who he said, I sense there are more of you. Don't be in pride. Don't be ashamed. Come. Don't be in pride. Don't be ashamed. Come. This is not the time for that. This is not the time for you to figure it out in your mind. Is it you? It is you. Come. Don't try to worry about nobody. Come laying hands on you. Just come. This is you and the Lord. Come. This is you and the Lord. Come. He sees your heart. Come. He sees your heart. Come. He sees your heart. Come. He sees he's not one to condemn you. He put his hand on the rock. Come. 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 Lift your hands here. In a sign of surrender, the universal sign of surrender. Not my way, not my will. Hey, not my way, not my will. Not my way, not my will. Hey, God, I thank you for being so just. I thank you for judging, Lord God, that I could turn. I thank you for judging, Lord God, showing me, Holy Spirit, where I missed it, where I missed you, Lord God. That I can enter into your grace through humility, Lord. That I am not, hey, what I even projected myself to be. God, I thank you. God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I humble myself, Lord. Be merciful unto me. Be merciful unto my misses. Be merciful unto my mistakes. Be merciful unto my drops, Lord God. I want to do your will. I want my hands to be clean. I want my heart to be pure. Hey, I want to stand before you, Lord God. Hey, I don't want your judgment. Hey, I don't want you to sentence me to death. I don't want you to sentence me. And you don't have to because he sent the rock. He sent Jesus and he already punished him and he already judged him and he already sent him to hell. Now you got to get in Christ. You got to get in the rock. You got to get in Jesus. You got to build on the rock. You got to humble yourself and come out of your own ways. He has everything you need. 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 Hey, he has everything you need. He has everything you need. He is your sufficiency. He is your all in all. He is all in all. He is the glory of God. He is preeminence. He has it. 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 Hey, he has it. He has it. Hey, today is a new day. I say his mercy. 
is new every day. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? That was mercy that woke up when you woke up. Hey, mercy woke up when you woke up. It's new. I said it's new. And he gave it. He releases it to humble hearts. He said, I will release it to who I want to release it to. Now, are you a candidate for God to release this mercy? You can't demand it, but you can request it. Hey, be merciful. Be merciful. Be merciful. Be merciful. Who I missed it, God. I get back in line. I missed it, God. I get back in line. I repent. I turn. I change my mind. Wash me again. Hey, Psalm 51 said, wash me with his Hey, renewing me a right spirit. Hey, a new heart. A new mind. Hey, 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 a new heart. A new heart. A new heart. A new mind. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah, minister as you live. Minister as you live. Minister as you live. Hey. That's the Holy Spirit. In the book of John, he says the Holy Spirit, he said he's going to judge. He's going to condemn the world of their sin. He says but he's going to judge the righteous that they're righteous. He's reminding you this morning that, your, that blood was shed for what you're dealing with. He's reminding you that you're righteous. You can't do what everybody else does. You have been bought with a price. You have been set apart. You can't do what they do. Stop looking at what they do. You cannot do what they do. Stop looking at what they do. You are righteous. By faith, you are righteous. We can get into it more. We're not moving from this. Because we need to understand this so we can grow up as a church. That you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hey, you've been redeemed. No more cycles. No more cycles. Break the whole bicycle. I ain't even getting on about break cycles. Condemnation. Con Stop it. Stop it. Stop the condemnation. Jesus broke it. Now you got to believe it's broken. Jesus broke the condemnation. You have to now believe by faith that it is broken. I sense they need to be led to the Lord. Prophetess, Elder Wild. I sense they need to be led to the Lord. Hey, shake it in my son of motion in me. Hey, the la passa, the la pass, shake it in me. No, so no, no more shake it in my heart. Ah, son of a no, you're clean. You're clean. No, you're clean. No, you're clean. The enemy, see how the enemy come? Now you feel like you gotta go do something else. No, no, no. He says, where sin was not imputed, it was counted for righteousness. And the fact that you came up here, this is a heart thing. The fact that you came up here. You let nobody judge. Hey, when God judges you, no man can judge you. Hey, when God judges you properly by his righteousness, no man can judge you. You are clean. Your past is forgiven. There's a washing taking place. 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 If you didn't come to this altar, you need to. Now's your moment. You did not come to this altar. You needed to come now. There's a cleansing going on right now. There's a cleansing going on right now. If you need to come to this altar, you did not to come now. We break the very spirit of pride. They say, he said, I resist it. So we have to resist pride. We have to resist pride. Pride tells you it's not you, it's okay, and it's a no, 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 Pastor Rachel, Pastor Rachel, Pastor Corey, y'all have anything? Come, come. Shake it, la pa, solo po, shake it, baby. My lots of washing. There's a washing. Hey, there's a washing. Hey, there's a washing. Hey, there's a washing. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Call it 
what it is. See, we hear judge. Judging and sentencing are not the same. A judge judges. This is what you're guilty of. But then he decides what is the sentence. And in his sentencing, there can be mercy. So really, a lot of times, don't judge me. It's really what it's saying. Don't sentence me. You can't send me to hell. That's sentencing. But I can call and say, no, that's wrong. No, that is not what God says. According to the word. But God is so, he is merciful. That's why it is important for us to operate from the love of God. Because when you know that you are loved, you operate from that place, from your relationship, and you are empowered by His grace to do what I could not do. That's a temptation for me. That could be a temptation. But His grace is sufficient for you, for every person that is here. Judge yourself and say, no, calling it what it is. You're not sentencing yourself. I'm calling it, this is exactly what it is. Now, Lord, I ask for mercy. And then he graces me to go forward. He gives grace on the front end. And if you err, he shows us mercy. And then he starts you back over in his grace. He starts you back over. Empower. No, I'm going to empower you again. I'm going to empower you again. That's why he told Paul, my grace is sufficient. My grace, not your works. That's why you can get tired trying to do. But if you come out of yourself and you get it to God, his grace, <laughs> in spite of whatever the weakness is in this flesh, His grace is sufficient. So I'm telling you, the Lord is good. He is kind. He is love. He is love. I said He is love. And when you realize you are love, that encourages you that even when people say, you think you're better, you think it. No, I'm just love. When you know you love, you behave different. You know what you used to, that was yesterday. I'm loved today, I know that now. So you will walk with your head up. No, I don't have to do that, why? Because I'm loved. And I'm reminding you, every person here, you can because you are loved. You can because you are loved. Not man's love, that can be up and down. You are love. And from that place, His grace is sufficient. So I rely on grace where there's weakness. To push, to endure, to still do. God wouldn't set me up for failure. Why would he send Christ to keep setting me up for failure? Nobody is nobody. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I'm in God. I'm in the rock. So I can. Not by my works, but by his grace. Because it is sufficient. And therefore, when I do err, I judge it. It is me. And his mercy is provided there. I want to say this before we go. Whoever you are, whoever you are, you are worthy. Come here.
here, baby. Come, no, you are love. Yeah, you come to God just like you are. You come to God just like you are. You come to God just like ah, love, love covers. Ah, you worried about what somebody got on cover? Hey, why? Because God sees her and His love is covering you. Everybody almost covering you today. You are worthy. You are loved. Hey, and He's been merciful to you. And no matter what has happened, ah, today, 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 His love is covering you.
we gotta teach the truth. That's why we gotta not teach the trend. What's trending? There are many that have been called, but they got caught up into a trend. And Satan is in the trend. I am telling you, Satan is in the trend. So when you hear truth, you resist it. Because our hearing has been so distorted that when truth comes, it's offensive. He did call it what it was. He did not sentence her. See? Because he said, now go and sin no more, which means he had to acknowledge, judge what happened. This is what you did. I'm showing mercy to you. Now go and sin no more. The body of Christ is no longer saying, now go and sin no more. And therefore, we're not maturing, we're not growing, and we're not empowered to go get the loss because we look just like them. And now they don't, the power of God is diminished because he ain't enough for us. How's he gonna be enough for me? But I'm here to tell you, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, the power of God, when it touches a life, is more powerful than anything, than any addiction, than anything, than any anger, than anything, than any past, than anything. The power of God can transform a life hallelujah so that's why you better share your testimony that's why god will take an ex-lesbian to preach the gospel of jesus christ why because of his goodness and mercy hallelujah he can't do it he can't do it he can't do it he can't do it He can't do it. He can't do it. His power, not by my words. It was his power, not by your words. You can't do it now. His grace is sufficient. His power. His power. I see you revolutionizing. Two of you. You lean in to everything that you can. You make sure you get the right support. If you don't have a church, you are welcome here. I don't need you trying to clean up nothing. Come on now. You ain't got to clean up nothing. No. Now nah, his righteousness, sanctification will wash you. Uh, no, you come just as you are. You are enough. You are worthy. You know why? Because he died for you. He died for you. He loved you. He died for you. He died for you. He died for you. We praying for revival and revival walked in the door. Woo. Keep thinking revival is just a moment. Revival 
words. It's an opportunity. You just have to discern by the spirit what does he want revived? What was dead? And you're putting it in between three and three, three to five days. Revival can happen in the moment when the spirit shows you something has is dead. You can have revival at your business. Ah, revival can break out at your business through a conversation. Revival can start right now at the grocery store and the Holy Spirit shows you something that is dead. But the greatness and the power of God that lives on the inside of you, revival showed up because the King is here. He showed up in me. The greatest power of God lives on the inside of me. Revival is here. Stop conditioning it to an event. Revival is here. Revival is here. Ah. Revival is here. Revival is here. Revival is here. It's here. So we thank you, Lord. You are forgiven. Every person that came to this altar. And as Jesus said to the woman who was caught in adultery, or whatever your miss was. Go and sin no more. Whatever he was writing in the sand, see, that's why I love why they didn't say it. He could have been writing what she did. Now go and sin no more. Grace. Empowerment. Not to go back to that anymore. So that no longer becomes your ruler because Jesus is Lord. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation. We worship him. And he will be Lord here. He will be Lord here. No, not will be. He is Lord here. And we got to go into this world full of grace and truth. The church is not the truth. And which has caused the grace to be polluted because we've actually converted it to us. Instead of giving it to who it belongs to, it is him. Do you have anything else, Pastor Marcus? Pastor Lord, This is the beginning. She was saying she was in going to Wawa's, but can feel the pull of the Lord. Don't you diminish what we do here. It was prophesied some months ago by Pastor Corey that the doors will be opening and we will be getting people. And today we learn truly about judgment and what it means and not that it don't give mercy and grace, but the true judgment and doing it in righteousness. But it should cause us, me, you, it should cause us to take our rightful position in God it's no longer about me. It's not about me. It's about the world. It's about God's chosen people who are still out there. They need to hear the word of the God. They need to be welcomed into the kingdom. And believe you me, there were some seeds sown in these two young ladies that grandmothers or someone sowed in them but it's our job to water them and wash them with the word of God. Not with our righteousness, but with God's righteousness. So don't take it lightly. Get yourself together. That, that is my pet peeve, you know it. But it's about looking inward and dealing with us so that we can be better for them. But they're gonna have such a great testimony. 
So get your testimony together so that they can hear what God has done for you, so that they can see the grace and mercy that God has given you. That is the word of the Lord. And I thank God for this house. But I want you to remember, when we do things, when we worship, when it's, the word goes forth, it's not contained in this building. When it's from a pure heart, pure hands, it extends outward. I pray for that parking lot when we come in. I just thought of something. That's how we found this house. When it was a Kmart down there, we knew nothing about this. We was, I was taking my mom to Kmart to watch the people during Christmas season. Because we didn't have kids, so we wanted to see the people buy the, the kids presents and all of that stuff. So that's, that was our outing. And we come and I said, Mom, I need to get back to church. I need to get back to find a home. Not just church. I needed a home. A home, a place I could call home. And went home and tell, told Elder James, he started looking all on the internet. We started watching. But people are waiting for our testimony because her testimony touched me because that's just the way it was for us. We were in the wilderness. You don't look at where somebody is right now. That's grace. This is grace. This is mercy. This is not of my own doing. This is grace and this is mercy. So get your testimonies ready. Your real testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. God is good. I say God is good. Give God a shout of praise. I say give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise. You are loved. You are worthy. Why? Because he said so. Go with God and he goes with you. God bless you.